Galaxy 666 by Pel Toro. Session 4. Chapter 2. I was a young boy at the time, said Bion, about the age my grandson is now. Just came out of Neophyte Star School, universally at my feet. Hyperdrive wasn't by any means new, but it was new enough to be very exciting. Then there were the warp men. Why, we looked on them as demigods. They were like the old Trojan heroes. Some of the old men who were alive when I was a boy remember the warp men, remember the first pioneers. They were very old men when the old men that I knew were boys. But still there was a living link, a living link, he repeated. That link has been broken for a long time now. It's been broken for a very long time. He sipped his alco appreciatively and paused reflectively. We blasted off on one of the old light Astra cruisers. They weren't bad, I suppose. Nowadays, of course, you only see them in museums, but they serve their purpose. I know. I know. I started my service at the same time. I've ridden the old Astros, said Milka. We had a few months uneventful voyaging, agricultural equipment, mining machinery, medical supplies. Had a couple of skirmishes with a few aliens that had long since been subdued and amalgamated into the Empire. And then... He sighed wearily. Then we got an assignment to conduct exploratory maneuvers around the fringe of Galaxy 666. We blasted off from 665, hit the warp uneventfully, bashed out of the computer course, and came up within rocketing distance of the rim star nearest us in 666. It was crazy. The computer showed one set of figures, and the VP scanner showed another set. We took a mean average and tried to blast in toward it. The closer we got to it, according to the figures, the farther our eyes told us it was. The VP scanners were telling one set of lies, and the computer was telling an entirely different set. And that star sat there, grinning and twinkling at us. Then suddenly, everything seemed to go to blazes in a bucket. The ship began leaping toward the star, the star began leaping toward the ship. From that day to this, I'm not quite sure which. But it happened. There was a flash and the rocket crashed out on us. We were too near the gravitational field to use the hyperdrive and we couldn't get into warp any other way. We began plunging down astrocruiser and men, cargo and lives, straight into the glowing white heart of that sun. I'll have another drink. Sure, sure, said Milka. I'll get you one. My turn, said Bion. He put a two-credit note on the table. Milka got up and fetched the drinks. There were special cheap rates for space pensioners. Maybe it was good to have some compensations. The old men in red were regarded with the very highest reverence. Any space pensioner could live like a god, providing he still had enough health and strength left to enjoy all the privileges which a grateful society flung open to him wherever he went. There weren't many who had. Two years in space would age a man more than ten years on the surface of a reasonably habitable planet. Milka came back with the drinks pushed the change from the two-credit note back across toward Bion, who pocketed it and continued his narrative. We had a good captain, gentleman of the old school. I believe his family could trace its line right back to Earth. One of the old aristocrats, eh? said Milka. Yeah, agreed Bion. One of the real old aristocrats. I've met one or two. They're fine men. There's something different about the old Earth originals, those chaps with unbroken pedigrees. Something different, he repeated. To continue, said Bion, sipping his drink again, we had a good captain, and I was little more than a boy, otherwise I'd have been dead. There was enough room for everybody in the space capsules. The captain sent the youngest first. Six capsules we launched. Five got caught in that crazy back to fourth gravitational swing. I watched while the old Astro Cruiser and the five other capsules went plummeting into the sun like an old hen followed by her chickens, like a swan and five little cygnets swimming over a waterfall to destruction. I cried like a child. In fact, I didn't notice it first. I wasn't with them. And then I realized that whatever insane power had killed them, whatever crazy gravitational trick had twisted all our survival data around so that it made no sense, whatever had laughed at our computer and shown our so-called scientific laws to be nothing but rubbish and gibberish as far as Galaxy 666 was concerned, had decided that it didn't want me. Didn't want you? asked old Milka. Didn't appear to want me anyway said Bion. My little capsules made off in the other direction as if it had been blown from some giant pea shooter. The acceleration was gradual, otherwise I'd been killed, because there wasn't enough anti-grav padding in it. I couldn't have withstood the G's. 
I watched the speed and direction calculator building up until I was right on the fringe of going into the warp through the sheer speed of it. No, gasped Milka. In a life capsule? In a life capsule, confirmed his friend. By the seven green moons, said Milka. I told you it was a strange tale, said Bion. What happened next? urged Milka. Let's have another drink, said the other old spaceman. Here ends session four.